description. I am going to discuss these uh, topics that is uh, essential for understanding capacitors for A-level physics uh, regardless of the exam board. So this tutorial will cover the process of charging of a capacitor, capacitance of a capacitor, factors that determine the capacitance, energy stored in a capacitor, connections in series and parallel, how to discharge a capacitor through a resistor, time constant and its significance, half-life, how to charge a capacitor, uses of capacitors in real life. Of course, I will, I'll, I'm going to take you through the tutorial as fast as I can, and I'm providing you with the link below to have a look uh, in your own time so that you can uh, understand the concept a uh, bit more in detail. The first thing is, what's a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that stores charges or electrical energy. And they come in different shapes and sizes. And if you look at any circuit board, you will see lots of them. And thanks to capacitors, we can use lots of electronic devices without a hitch. Now this is a small circuit and you can see the, the position of capacitors. So these are capacitors. And you may not know that the, the screen of your smartphone is a grid of capacitors. And uh, the, the touch system is based on the mechanism of capacitors. So I'm going to have a look at charging process of a capacitor. Here you can see a capacitor and it has two plates. And these two metal plates are connected to a battery or cell. When these plates are connected, the electrons from the negative terminal of the battery reach the plates attached to it and then the negative charges on the other plate get repelled, as you know, like charges repel. So this process continues until the potential difference between the plates is the same, same as the EMF of the cell or the battery. Then at that point, we say the capacity is charged. So a charged capacitor looks like this. So a charge capacitor has one plate with a positive charge and the other one with the negative charge and there is a potential difference between the two plates. At this stage we say the charge is Q and the voltage is V. So it has been observed experimentally that the charge of a capacitor is directly proportional to the, the voltage across the plates. So that means Q equals KV. So K equals Q over V. This constant is called the capacitance of the capacitor. And this is the definition of capacitance. It's the charge per unit volume. Sorry, you need uh, voltage. And the units for the capacitance is Coulomb per volt and is called Farad in honor of Michael Faraday, the father of electricity. And one Farad is 10 to the power 6 microfarad or 10 to the power 12 picofarad. Now I'm going to show you the factors 
that determine the capacitance of a capacitor. Now this is a parallel plate capacitor and the area of a plate is A, the distance between the plate is D and the permittivity of the median between the plate is epsilon. So this is the formula epsilon A over D. You can see the greater the area, the greater the capacitance. The smaller the distance between the plates, the greater the capacitance. The greater the permittivity of the medium, the greater the capacitance. So by adjusting these three factors, we can maximize the capacitance of a capacitor. However, there are limits to the area and the distance. Of course, the greater area means the greater space for capacitors. So it is not feasible. And the smaller the distance mean, uh, the capacitance will go up, but there is a risk of being the two plates being touched and that may lead to short circuiting. So the only possible step in this scenario is to maximize epsilon or the permittivity. And we do that by filling this gap with high permittivity materials such as mica, glass or even paper. So here are some examples, very simple examples to use this, this formula C equals epsilon A over D. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the energy stored in a capacitor. Now at, on this occasion, the capacity is not charged. Charge is zero, and so is voltage. Now it is fully charged. It, the charge is Q and the voltage is V. So the average voltage through which Q charge is brought to the capacitor is zero plus V over two, which is V over two. And we know the work done is charge time voltage. On that basis, the work done in moving Q charges through a voltage of, through an average voltage of V over two is half QV. The work done in moving the charges into the capacitors in turn becomes the energy stored in the capacitor. So it's, E equals half QV and then since Q equals CV it become half CV squared and O half Q squared over C. So this is a graph of Q against V. You can see the area under the graph, area under the line is half QV which is the same as the energy stored in the capacitor. And now there are some worked examples for you to go through actualization. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is connecting capacitors. Okay, there are situations you have to connect a few capacitors to change the capacitance of the circuit. So this is done in two different ways. First one in series and then in parallel. So this is in series. This is, these are in parallel. So you can see if they are in series, they have the same charge, but the voltage splits up. In this situation, when they are in parallel, the, volt, the charge splits up between the two but the voltage remain the same. So here the total capacitance is 1 over Ct, 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Here it's 
C1 plus C2. So here is the proof which you can read later. And there are some worked examples how to calculate the total capacitance when they are connected in complex circuits. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is discharging a capacitor through an external resistor. Now, this is a topic most six formers are usually dreading, but I'll take it take it through uh, from scratch. So this is the capacitor, and it's charged with this being plus Q and this being minus Q, and I'm going to discharge this capacitor through this external resistor R, and this is the switch, and the voltage across the resistor is measured by the voltmeter. Right, now the rate of discharge is proportional to Q. I put minus Q because it's a loss of charge. That means the rate of discharge is equal to minus KQ. So I'm rearranging these variables. I get 1 over Q times DQ equals minus K DT. Then I integrate both sides. I get on the left ln Q and on the right hand minus KT plus C. This is log Q to the base E. Then when I make Q the subject, I get this. And if if the initial charge is Q naught, then we can get this one. And then from the formula, we get Q equals Q naught e to the power minus kT. In other words, it is an exponential relationship. The loss of charge is exponential. It is an exponential decay because of the presence of E here. The constant in this case is called 1 over RC. RC is called the time constant. It is the product of the resistance and capacitance. So this formula becomes QO equals Q naught E to the power minus T over RC. Now let's look at the significance of time constant in this formula. When the time is one time constant, you can see from this graph, the, the charge of the capacitor becomes 37% of what it was. And in the next time constant, the loss is still the same. I mean, it is it becomes 37% of what it was. That's why we call this is an exponential relationship. The loss of proportion is, is the same during the same time interval. So it is mathematically proven here. It's very simple to prove using a simple algebra. So the next thing is half-life. That means the time taken by a capacitor to lose half of its charge. And then I use a simple mathematics and it turns out to be 0.69 RC. That means 0.69 of the time constant. So that means half light depends on the time constant. Right. Now I'm going to show you interactively everything that you have learned so far. So this is the formula Q equals 100 e to the power minus t over 2. So the time constant in, in this case is 2. And the initial charge Q naught is 100. So I'm going to animate this. 
Now you can see after one time constant, the charge is 0 0.37 Q naught. I mean it has lost 63% of its initial charge. So that's why I chose Q naught as 100. Then you can see it very clearly. Right now I'm going to move it again. Yeah, it lost again 63% of what it was at this stage. Now it is 0 0.14 Q naught. So like that, with the time, the, the loss of charge is getting smaller. So this is an exponential decay. Now I'm going to show you the half-life. That means the time taken by the capacitor to lose half of its charge. Here it is 100 Coulomb. That means it should be somewhere here. Here it is. So this is the half-life, which is 0 0.69 ln2. And here are some simple work examples for you to practice. And in addition to this formula, which is Q equals Q naught e to the power minus T over C, we have the same formula for the current and the voltage. And they are also take the exponential, taking the exponential form. So the next topic is going to be charging a capacitor. This is the charging process. This is the battery, external resistance, switch, the capacitor, and the voltmeter. And so this is the formula. The voltage across the capacitor is given by V0 minus I0 RE minus T over C. So it becomes VC equals V0 1 minus E minus T over C. So here VR is the voltage across the resistor and VC is the voltage across the capacitor. And with the time, this is how they change. You can see when the charging is on, the, cap the voltage across the capacitor is going up and in proportion to that, the voltage across the resistor goes down. However, the sum of their voltage remains the same, which is V0. So, after watching this video, you can practice interactively. So, the final topic is the use of capacitors in real life. So, as I said before, a grid of capacitors are on your smartphone. So, when you touch the, that grid, the, the touch mechanism starts working. In addition to that, this is the, the tuning condenser of a radio. So, this is a, uh, there is a series of capacitors and by turning this knob, you can increase or decrease the capacitance, which in turn determine the radio, radio station that you listen to. And so this is the flash. The flash is powered by a capacitor and the charge in the capacitor is released in a very short period of time, which leads to a very high current and that gives that bright light. And so please Read the tutorial now and you can practice uh, the, the graphs interactively on the tutorial. Thank you for watching.